QAnon, martial law, Alex Jones, coup d'etat, oh my. In today's episode, I try to show the different schools of thought when applying wider optics to politics. Initially, martial law was something no one wanted or believed was a potential arbitrary outcome from political impasse. However, things have begun to change. There are those out there that believe martial law is now a good thing and that it needs to happen if certain members of the deep state that are obstructing liberty and sovereignty in the United States are to be dealt with. At the same time, there is rumored to be a coup that is happening, a power grab at the presidential and vice presidential levels to usurp power from the Republicans to place Speaker Pelosi in the president's seat. Meanwhile, suspected controlled opposition, disinformant agents, and agent provocateurs are serving as the face of alternative media. Alex Jones and others of the ilk to the uninformed represent most citizen investigators and open source journalists like myself. Those rolling in from mainstream media land must overcome some serious cognitive dissonance, but consequently, many of those already in alternative media circles think they have it all figured out. We're all growing and learning. Waking up is a gradual, continual process, not a sudden miraculous understanding of all nefarious underpinnings or potentially sinister facets. I think we should understand that. Let's get into the show. All right, before we begin, I just want to say, um, take this with a grain of salt. It's going to be a little bit hard to articulate to those individuals who are just coming in from, you know, mainstream media land and who haven't been following some of these particulars uh, as closely of other, as other, uh, excuse me, as others individuals have. But, um, Right here, what I want to play is something from a channel, All Time Conspiracies, where they essentially lay out, they articulate what the conservative mindset was during the Obama administration um, about the fears of martial law and the skepticism the right wing had about a, essentially a plot to institute a military type of lockdown military style type of lockdown that was going to be you know nefarious and and that was a, essentially painted as a bad thing and you know nobody wanted that and i, I want to paint I, I just wanted to paint a picture to show you how, what the mindset was initially and then as we go on to show how it's sort of uh shifted and i think that the way it's shifted has sort of been very dangerous because i think they there's a lot of uh, investment uh, putting in a lot of investment of trust into the political system which you know not long ago people were very successfully skeptical of or were increasingly more skeptical of but let's go ahead and play this uh this clip here hopefully i don't get any copyright strikes i am going to leave a link in the description and only play a brief clip in june 2015 a historic supreme court ruling made same-sex marriage legal across all 50 u.s states but Texas has been defying federal law by refusing marriage licenses to gay couples. Texas is suspicious that this training exercise is in fact a cover for the US government to deploy military personnel on the streets in order to impose martial law and equal marriage laws in their state. The announcement of Jade Helm 15 was accompanied with this map, which shows the areas of America designated for military operations. Each of the seven states are color-coded to correspond with a degree of hostility of the training missions that will take place there. The entirety of Texas has been labeled hostile, and this has seriously angered the state's citizens and are frightened. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, end it there. You know, besides from all the whiz-bang editing and sound effects, the information is essentially accurate. The It wasn't just Texas and it wasn't just conservatives who were concerned about Jade Helm 15 and the implications it had with military... Uh, potentially segueing into a you know military style lockdown via martial law or a national emergency or something like that uh, they, they did a very good job of, of laying that that portion out but again it wasn't solely associated with those aspects but um, listen to how it now martial law is being spun anonymous individual who's leaving cryptic messages on social media no one knows what this person looks like, no one knows who this person is, but this person is telling everybody that everything is about to change exponentially. And we already know that, we already know that. But what they're saying is that Obama, Hillary, all these people that for a time immemorial have run the countries of the world, and have screwed people over and are all criminals and guilty of treason, so forth and so on, that all of them are about to be arrested. You have to trust Jeff Sessions and Donald Trump. These people are all about to be arrested and they're all gonna to go to Guantanamo Bay. But in the meantime, the United States is, have to, is gonna to have to be under martial law because it's gonna be so upsetting to everything 
that the country's going to be out of control and the military will have to roll down the street and that's all good all See that that and I'm again. This is a uh, channel Richie from Boston. I will leave a link in the description. And I'm just showing you the mindsets that are out there. How this is beginning to change, and this is starting to permeate in the conservative uh, media, even in the conservative alternative media. Okay, um, QAnon is associated with you know conspiracy theories, and at least that's how it's painted here. And I'll go ahead and I'll go ahead and play this clip because this ties in because the QAnon um, conspiracy, if you will, ties into uh, another part of this video that we're about to get into so let's go ahead and play this this is just to show you the mindset and paint a picture of uh really what's be what's playing out in the shadows and how the media is trying to take control of the narrative and take control of how it evolves and signs emblazoned with only the letter q their numbers seem to be growing and they were spotted last night at president trump's florida rally they are a new fringe conspiracy theory group called q anon i want to bring in cnn's tom foreman tom a new fringe conspiracy group, QAnon, and again, it's associated with the right wing and uh, individuals like Alex Jones, which will take us to what we're about to get into. But if you see how the narrative has changed from martial law being this thing people were cautious about and didn't want, especially conservatives, you know, the gun-toting Americans who would actually be able to, you know, fight back if you know, there was any type of, you know, totalitarian measure like that. It's now starting to evolve that we need martial law so we can lock up the bad liberals. So let's go ahead and play this. Now, this is Steve from Think About It. I respect this. This, this gentleman here and uh, you know like I said we're, we're not always right and we all have varying different op uh, varying opinions so we're not always going to agree with each other's research as um, as some of my listeners and subscribers they know that you know when you're in these these kind of realms there's a lot of contention and there's a lot of conflicting ideas I'm just laying out the information I'm just laying out people's mindsets for you and again I just want to reiterate that before we uh, start to play this clip here in order for a coup to be successful, they've got to silence as many opposing voices who are exposing their evil plan. And so they've taken people like Alex Jones and Infowars off of every single social media platform. They did that together, all the social media giants. He still has his website and some radio stations carrying him, but the reach he used to have before they all conspired to remove him was many, many times greater. They have lied, slandered, and attacked him on every level. George Soros has literally filed dozens of lawsuits against him to keep him financially tied up and force him to focus so much of his time fighting court battles. I don't really care what anyone thinks about Alex Jones. That doesn't matter. He has his faults just like we all do. But one thing I know about Alex Jones is I've never known Alex Jones to lie and make up stories about events or people at any time. And anything you've ever heard that's opposite about him You've been listening to a mainstream media source whose main goal through organized deception has been to bring him down to keep you from. Now, I will pause right here and just say something. I do not agree with everything he has to say, and I do not agree with everything Alex Jones has to say. Um, I did watch the full Alex Jones interview with uh, Megyn Kelly, and I, I do believe, you know, in many ways, Alex Jones, when he puts out information, it's often good, but it's laden with falsehoods. And he's even had to retract some of his statements uh, as well. And him having those followers that makes them look like uninformed individuals and then, you know, it kind of affects other individuals in the same field because it discredits them and it, it makes people very skeptical of other individuals who might say any of the same buzzwords that Alex used or other individuals used. So I'm going to go ahead and play this right here just really briefly. That we regret any negative impact our commentaries may have had on Mr. Alifanis, Comic Ping Pong, or its employees. Another apology came just this spring. Chobani Yogurt sued Jones after InfoWars fanned the lie that Chobani employees committed a sexual assault in Idaho. On behalf of InfoWars, I regret that we mischaracterized Chobani. You misstated facts about Chobani and its owner, which you could have found out if you just had a reporter do a little shoe leather reporting, pick up the phone, call, check out the facts. You never would have had. Yeah, OK, and again, I'm just going to pause this here. This is just two examples of, um, you know, Alex Infowars having to retract statements that they've made. And again, we're all going to be wrong. But the issues here is, is that, you know, and a lot of a lot of guys, a lot of people think that, you know, he's this guy is an agent. OK, and uh, I, there is evidence to support that. But I'm not here to throw fuel on any fires like that. I'm not I'm not here to, to make any of those impressions. I'm just pointing this out. Um, we, we don't always agree. And this individual has led some people astray. 
Uh, and I, you wouldn't want to be associated with people who they don't approach, you know, facts and information with the same type of scrutiny that you would expect individuals, especially if you're going to be out there, you know, disseminating information, which is why I try to be as careful as I can, although I admit that I will make mistakes. I have made mistakes and I will continue. But that's a part of the growing process, because if you're already perfect, you're already great. You know, you have no room to grow. So let's go ahead and play the rest of this here. From hearing what the lawless in our government are doing against the president. Now I'm going to explain to you what I understand the plan to be and how they hope to complete it. I want you to listen to this with an open mind as we watch events unfold. Okay, now pay attention to this because this is the crux of what I, I've been getting at and trying to paint the mindsets in my previous videos when I've been making mention of, you know, coup d'etat and power grabs, the usurpment of power at the presidential and vice presidential levels. Let's go ahead and listen to what Steve has to say about this. Again, links in the description. Fold together right before our eyes. The Robert Mueller investigation will be released as soon as they feel that it will be to their advantage, their greatest advantage to use against him in an effort to impeach him and remove him from the presidency. This could be very, very soon. They must go about it in a way in which both President Trump and Vice President Pence will both be removed from office. If you know the governmental hierarchy, then you understand that the third person in line for the presidency would be the Speaker of the House. That would be none other than Nancy Pelosi. They're going to do everything in their power. Schumer, Pelosi, the Democratic Party, the fake Republicans, otherwise known as rhinos, have been implementing this plan for over two years. This is their plan. So I'm going to end this here. Uh, you can play. Uh, I'll go ahead and leave a link in the description so you can watch the rest of the video for yourself. But I've definitely just laid out what I have been getting at, you know, the different mindsets that are in the circles out there. So do you see what I'm saying? Do you see how interesting that is, how um, a conservative mindset in both con um, mainstream and alternative circles where, you know, martial law, a declaration of martial law would be a very bad thing. And we were very skeptical of the government. And now that, you know, Trump is elected, the narrative has sort of changed where martial law is a good thing and the bad, you know, the liberals are going to be locked up, the George Soros's and the Clintons and stuff. But first, what ha has to happen is martial law because it's going to cause a bunch of chaos and disarray. And on top of that, you have this potential coup d'etat that's happening and the presidential and vice presidential levels where to get Pelosi in, into, into office. Now, I'm not saying that I agree with any of these um, theories or any of these ideas. I'm just going to show you the different lines of thought out there, the different schools of thought in each branch that you take goes off into a different segment as well like the QAnon and and Republican circles and liberal circles they have their own you know uh, conservatives they adhere to the QAnon while liberals they um, adhere to anonymous so it's just you know putting those things out there you have to be careful when you're entering this territory because you can see the the dynamics and and w which ways information can go it, it's very fluid uh, you've got to learn how to you know eat the meat spit out the bones i i definitely like to uh reiterate that piece of advice because not all of it's good you got to learn how to separate the good from the bad and that's when you apply your discernment and scrutiny and you have to approach everything by case by case basis but i just wanted to put that out there uh, it's very interesting how the narrative's starting to shift um take care of yourselves out there california carter signing off